Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's preview, as the Dragons take on the Lions in what is, for all intents and purposes, a dead rubber. However, um, as the season comes to an end, for example, especially if you look at the way that the, and the selections from the Lions and for the likes of the Dragons, very much an opportunity for players to put their hand up one more time, to put themselves in the selection fold, you know, for, for, for the Lions players, for maybe a Springbok call-up, to put themselves in a contract fold, you know, the likes of both teams in terms of where your futures are, whether you're good enough at this level, because especially the Lions, they have brought in a couple of other players who can try and sort of put their hand up and... Um, you know, try and put themselves on the map. But at the end of the day, it is an 11th versus 15th clash. Dragons are currently sitting on 19 points. They have picked up just the two wins and one draw and have lost 14 matches. The Lions currently sit at 11th with 37 points, one point above Connacht. So the Lions can't go higher. That's that's unfortunately then for them the big thing. However, a bonus point win, for example, would ensure they were to finish 11th and they would finish above Connacht, Cardiff, Benetton, Dragons and um, Zebra. So... I think it's an important game for the Lions to win because it hasn't been the best season for the Lions. And I think next season is going to be an interesting one in terms of the recruitment they're going to have to make. But I also think that their season has been blown out of proportion because on the back of quite a good recent form, the Lions, out of their 17 matches, have won seven games and lost 10. Now, if you look at the Bulls, who are currently sitting in sixth place uh, and fighting for potential top four, they've played 17 games as well. They've lost seven um, and they've won 10. So the Bulls have only won three more matches than the Lions. You know, the Sharks and the Stormers have both only won four more matches than the Lions. And a lot of and those extra wins came against the Lions, for example. So, you know, if the Lions had beaten the Bulls once in the URC, then the Bulls actually would have only won one more game. So I don't think it's been as bad a campaign for the Lions as a lot of people would like to think. Um, at the end of the day, there's always going to have to be a worse franchise. And they could the worst South African franchise is still going to finish above potentially two Welsh conferences, an Irish team, as well as both Italian sides. So I don't think it's been that bad. Uh, I do think, however, that a lot needs to be done in, in the wake of next season if they are going to try and compete and stuff like that. But talks about them having uh, not deserving to be in the URC and being relegated for me are pretty unfair because I don't think it's been as bad a tournament as a lot of people like to think it is. Um, but in terms of the teams, if we look at it, this is how the Dragons do line up. Now, they are playing for pride. They are 11 points behind Benson. They, are, they can't go... Above anybody, they can't, Zebra can't catch up to them. So they've had a pretty appalling season. So for them, sitting with a minus 232 points difference, it's damage control. It's can they give their home fans one last thing to cheer about. And the team that will try and do that is Aki Soli, Elliot D, Masaka Doge in the front row, Joe Maxime, um, Hugh Taylor, Ben Fry, Tane Basham, Ollie Griffiths. Now, personally for me, um, I'm watching this game, watching the Welsh players. Maybe even watching Kazar Bethner. But I think Tane Basham, for example, is a really exciting player. I think he's very, a very fun player to watch. And I think that he's somebody I'm going to be looking out for a lot. Um, in terms of the back line, Gonzalo Bertrano, Will Reed, obviously Bertrano being the Argentinian uh, scrum off, very exciting player to watch. Um, Jared Rossa, Rio Dyer, Jordan Williams, the back three. And then you've got Josh Lewis and Adam Warren in the centers. Off the bench from the men from Wales, it's Taylor Davies, Lloyd Fairbrother, uh, Chris Coleman, Max Williams, Lennon Gregains, Lewis Jones, Sam Davies, and I own Davies. So, I mean, as I said, you know, for the Dragons side, it's it's they need to be a reset. You know, in many ways, it's going to be it's going to be it's 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 over. The nightmare is over for them because it has just been a, a horrific season. Um, you know, just two wins out of seventeen could potentially be two wins out of eighteen is not a season to write home about. Unfortunately, you know, they 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 scored thirty five tries the entire season. Um, so it, it hasn't been a particularly good season for them at all. Uh, for the Lions, this is and this is how they will line up. Uh, as I said, I think it's a lot of achieve for them to sort of make a bit of a statement and to try and win. I mean, if, if, if they finish with 18 games, 8 wins, 10 losses, it's, it's, about, what, it's about a 40, 45% um, win rate, which is not brilliant um, and, not, and, and needs to be better, but it's not cataclysmic. You know, we're not talking about a side coming dead last and absolutely no hope whatsoever. The issue is more where the players are going. But it is a team of players who probably should be there next season with the, with the exception of Vincent Tuka, because a lot of the players who are moving on are not within the side. So uh, front row, JB Smith, Jakob Asahi, Ruan Dre. Ruan Dre is going to have to step up. In the wake of Kali Sardi being announced by the Sharks, he's going to have a massive role to play next season unless the Lions manage to bring in another tight head, which I think they have to. Uh, Rayan Northmarkle will captain the side. He's next to Ruan Fenter. Very exciting players, Ruan Fenter. I think he 
will become the Vincent Tuca in terms of a young player that the Lions fans need to try and enjoy. Because unfortunately, when you're not winning games, when you, you're watching games for individuals and 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 uh, you you want to sit and you become invested in individual's career now. You know, I, Vincent Tuca is probably one of my favorite players in the world right now. He's leaving to the Sharks, so I don't have that many more with the Lions. Obviously, I still want to do well, but the, I don't have that when I watch the Lions. So now it comes down to likes of a Jordan Hendricks, for example, and I think that Ruan Ruan Fenter will very much become that kind of player because he does look like such an exciting talent. Uh, the loose trio is CBC, Sanguini, Vince Tuca, and Frankie Horn. Frankie Horn back at the eighth man, no Emmanuel Tuca in the 23. Morning Vandenberg is actually the vice captain for this weekend, and I think that's quite a big statement because a month ago or two months ago, or let's say three months ago, whenever Vince Tuca decided to leave, he would have been the vice captain easily. But what I think that it is, it's a reward for Mornay Vandenberg for committing to the union because he has signed a two-year deal and will be here next season and the season after, hopefully. Uh, he partners Jordan Hendrickson. And uh, again, very exciting combination there. Edel Vandenberg, Steon Pienaar, Q and Horn. Um, and then it's a young, it's, it's such a young back line because Matt Moore and Henkel van Beek are the center pairing. So with the exception of a, of a Steven Pienaar, Oh, I mean, Steven, Steven Pino is pretty young. I mean, that backline is all below 25 years old. So it's an exceptionally young, inexperienced, but exciting backline. And I think that that's what we're seeing this weekend with the Lions um, is the future. And is it bright? And it's difficult to try and say because they're playing against Dragon Side, which isn't phenomenal. But it is an opportunity for them to put their hands up and to say, invest in us and we'll try and fill the gap next season. Um, off the bench, PJ Burtis, Dees Tolley, and Asinati and Klaver Kanye will cover the front row. Ruben Skuman gets a bit of time off. Jared Keynes is the replacement of the flank. And Andre Warner, Emmanuel Russ, and Tian Swanepoel are the back line replacements. On paper, you've got to back this Lions side because this Dragon side has been so poor the entire season. However, they are at home. The Lions are playing away and they are playing a couple of youngsters. So anything could happen. Um, personally, all I would like to see is I'd like to see a big game from Ruben Fenter. It's the last game we're going to see in Vince Tuca in a Lions shirt. So the, the least he can do is give us a nice performance going out. Um, unless there is a whole legal case in terms of him actually being contracted until October and all that kind of nonsense. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but let me know what you all think um, is going to happen down in the comments below. Please give me your score predictions. Please do smash a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steven. I'll chat to you soon.